Photobiomodulation therapy, formerly known as low-level laser therapy, is the application of light of very specific parameters to tissue where there is degeneration or injury to improve, repair, and reduce inflammation and pain. Photobiomodulation therapy appears too good to be true as it does many things, but it really does just one thing, and it does it very well, and that is it reduces oxidative stress. Oxidative stress is accepted as the underlying trigger for most diseases and degenerative conditions. It is also a component in the inflammatory phase of acute and chronic conditions. Unlike drugs and surgery, photobiomodulation therapy actually promotes regeneration, reduces inflammation and pain, is non-toxic, non-invasive, and has no side effects. Over 400 randomized controlled trials have been published using photobiomodulation therapy devices, and the technology has featured in over 4,000 laboratory studies. Photobiomodulation therapy is used in thousands of clinics, hospitals, and elite sports institutions in over 70 nations. So you're asking yourself, can light really do all of this? Really? Let me take a few moments to explain. The human body consists of 11 systems, each system made up of organs, each organ made up of cells. As a matter of fact, your body has over 37 trillion cells, each individually programmed to perform thousands of functions daily. Every single cell in the body has one component in common, and that component is called the mitochondria. Each cell has hundreds to thousands of mitochondria. The mitochondria is the power plant of the cell, taking the air that we breathe and the food that we eat and combining them to produce the energy your cells need to carry out their daily functions. This cellular energy is called ATP, which stands for adenosine triphosphate. Each cell produces over 10 million ATP molecules every day. This process occurs in a very organized manner in something called the electron transport chain. In the very last step of this chain lies an enzyme called cytochrome C oxidase. It is the receptor site for oxygen from the air that we breathe. When oxygen attaches, ATP is produced when everything is going well. Now let's talk about when things are not going well. Our cells are exposed to conditions every day that can cause the production of free radicals. This can result from things that are good for us as well as those things that can be bad for us. For example, exercise, our digestive process, chemicals, infectious agents, nutritional imbalances, biological imbalances, and lack of oxygen can all cause the production of free radicals inside our cells. Remember the enzyme cytochrome C oxidase and how oxygen attaches there to produce ATP or cell energy? Well, not only can these free radicals also bind with cytochrome C oxidase, they actually have a higher affinity for that enzyme than oxygen does, attaching there and blocking the oxygen absorption. This decreases the cell's ability to produce ATP in the quantity necessary, the equivalent of not having enough gas in your car to get to work. Well, our cells naturally neutralize these free radicals with rest and antioxidants from our diet. However, when the free radical production is greater than the body can effectively neutralize, a bad thing starts to occur. The cell cannot produce enough ATP necessary to complete its daily functions. This further stresses the cell and triggers a production of an even more damaging free radical called reactive oxygen species. Have you ever seen an apple turn brown after you cut it in half, or a piece of metal rust? This is an example of oxidative stress, or the production of reactive oxygen species. Unresolved oxidative stress is accepted as a key component in the inflammatory phase of acute and chronic injuries, accelerates the aging process, and is the underlying trigger for most diseases and neurodegenerative conditions. These can include disorders such as Parkinson's and multiple sclerosis, even Alzheimer's, gene transcription errors leading to cancer, heart and blood vessel disorders such as heart attack, heart failure, arteriosclerosis, and cardiac ischemia, lung conditions such as emphysema and lung cancer, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, cataracts and vision disorders, inflammatory diseases such as arthritis and inflammatory bowel disease, diabetes, kidney disease, skin lesions caused by sun damage, autoimmune diseases, and the list goes on and on. Wow. So how can light affect all of this? It turns out our cells respond to light just like plants do, very specific colors of light, particularly in the red and near-infrared spectrum. 
Remember the receptor site cytochrome C oxidase and all of those free radicals? Well, cytochrome C oxidase happens to be the absorption site for light in our cells as well. When the light of the correct color and intensity is applied, it immediately displaces the free radicals from cytochrome C oxidase, allowing oxygen to rush back in and resume the process of producing ATP, or cell energy. These free radicals are then absorbed by local blood vessels, resulting in local vasodilation. Together, these steps contribute to the reduction of stress on cells, as well as removing the cause of oxidative stress formation and triggering the cascade of events that stimulate repair. Doesn't it make sense that if we can reduce oxidative stress, increase circulation, increase energy production, and trigger repair all at the cellular level, it would be beneficial for our overall health? Are you now asking yourself, is there proof? Well, in over 400 randomly controlled trials and 4,000 clinical studies, photobiomodulation has demonstrated that the application of light can promote tissue repair, reduce inflammation, and reduce pain.